everybody, this is Pastor Joe again here with a deeper dive from Community Alliance Church. And uh, we've been in a summer series called Masterclass, and this past Sunday on July 10th, we, we got to talking about this idea that often in our lives, when we're looking at this wisdom that we've been seeking from Proverbs, we, we tend to think the areas of our lives where we need wisdom are just going to be completely obvious. Like, it's obvious that I have a huge financial problem, or it's, it's obvious that I've got this huge conflict with this person at work. But this past Sunday, we talked about a deeper issue in our life that isn't so obvious. We talked about the issue of pride and how pride can camouflage itself in our life, how it kind of hangs out there below the surface, kind of hidden in the background so we can't see it. And often the challenges that we face and the things that we deal with aren't what they seem to be. It's our pride camouflaged underneath them really hurting us. Now, there was one section of the message that I just didn't have time to cover, but I promised I would get back to it. And I, I think it's really important that we talk about an issue where pride can show up in our lives. And to do this, I want to look here in Proverbs um, in chapter in chapter 21 at, at something that Solomon says. He's writing to this agricultural society, and he says to them, haughty eyes, which is just an expression for pride, and a proud heart, the un plowed field of the wicked produce sin. He says that haughty eyes and a proud heart, the unplowed field of the wicked produce sin. When, when I was growing up living out in the country, we had a couple gardens. And in this one garden, it was sort of more of a field where every year my dad planted corn. And the corn planting and harvesting process, it was very labor intensive. Every spring he would get out there and he would till up all of the ground, then we get the dirt kind of organized into rows where you put in seeds and some fertilizer and cover it up and begin to wait for the corn to grow. And as it did, we would, we would have to pull out bad weeds. We would have to keep it watered during dry spells. And then even when the corn grew, it wasn't, the work wasn't done. It had to be harvested and husked and then canned. It was very, very hard work, which is probably why at some point my dad let that field go. He, he quit tilling it up and he quit growing corn and we just started to buy it at the corn stand for $3 a dozen. It, it seemed well worth it. But do you know what happened once we quit working that field and, and growing corn in it? It, it didn't grow nothing. It, it didn't just stay a field of dirt. Weeds began to grow in it. See, see the place in, in the field, the field that was actually once designed to grow vegetation and things that brought life, on its own, untended, untilled, began to grow the very things that were created to choke out life. And that's Solomon's point about our lives. He's saying if we aren't working to till up the pride in our lives, if we aren't always on the lookout for how pride is camouflaged underneath the surface, then naturally, on its own, sin is going to grow up out of that pride. You see, we might look at our lives and we might say, okay, I have a huge anger problem, or, or I, have a, I have a real greed problem, or I have a, I'm just so jealous all the time. And what Solomon says is beneath that surface sin, well, there could be really a heart of, of pride. And, and you're looking at the weeds on the surface, but they're growing out of that unplowed field. Let me give you a couple of examples. Anger can sometimes grow out of pride. Anger really is me saying that I am right and you are wrong. I did the right thing. And you did the wrong thing. It, it's my pride or, or greed. Greed could be more than just wanting more things. R greed could really be saying, look, if I have more than you or if I have more than other people that I think matter, it proves that I am better than them. Jealousy says, look, I deserve to have what you have. It would be right for me. I am, I am more deserving of the thing that matters to you that you have than you are. Um, even gossip, if you think about gossip, really, it's, it's me talking about how I am better or I know better and I would do better than what other people did. All of disobedience really can just come down to the fact that I think that I am above the rules. The rules don't apply to me. I shouldn't have to do what I think everyone else should do. And here's the thing about pride and the thing about weeds in our lives. When, we, when you leave a field grow weeds, well, it doesn't stay weeds for very long. And when we let pride grow in our life, it's not going to stay pride very long. It's going to grow up into sin. And, and, and a field of weeds doesn't stay weeds. It actually grows up into more of a, a field. And, and then it can be a thicket with saplings. And given enough time, it'll become a forest. And in our lives, when we don't deal with the pride that's in our lives, well, it can grow up into a forest eventually of sin on the surface. But really beneath it is this attitude of pride. 
So that's just one more way that pride can camouflage itself in our lives. I hope that that was helpful. Last week we talked about, though, the true answer to the pride in our lives is not to just get, get this sense of, okay, I'm not so great, I'm worthless. It's actually to find humility, to find this sense of not thinking less of myself to fix my pride. It's just thinking of myself less and thinking of Christ more. I talked about that more at the end of the sermon this past Sunday on July 10th. I encourage you, if you missed that, go check it out. Have a great week. We're praying for you, and we can't wait to see you this coming Sunday.